Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for part 2 of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 update, where there's still far more exciting progress that needs to be talked about. So let's get stuck in. In the last video I talked about how we started to produce Naquium and actually have a decent supply of it running through, and that means that now it's appearing over here in the, uh, in the spaceport, it's being dropped off by a ship somewhere this ship here and it can then be put into a train and because it's in a train that means it can be then be brought over here where we're now starting to make the, the uh, data cards for Deep Space Science 1 and this is a big step forward because we've had a big a big lull in new science packs since we finished all of the uh, all the tiers and the advanced science so having this coming through is, is, is fantastic and this was a well I, I set this area up a little while ago but to be this sort of the the start of the Deep Space Science production so I put in some cooling for, for the thermofluid I put in some uh, making some nano material up here because this is something you need I needed this for some of the things before we actually had the deep space science, like making the spaceships can go all the way out to the far flung places like Stardust. So I needed to start making these, but my intention always was to then have, have, the, have them passed further down and then carry on making them into science. And so here we are. We have the uh, we have the science the science starting to be made. And the, the first thing I needed to think about was these um was, was making these advanced research servers because these are different to the normal research servers. All the other science packs we've been using standard research servers, these things, uh, in order to turn the, the various data cards into the catalogs that we can then pass off to be turned into the, into the exciting real science packs. But you can't use those for deep space science because deep space science is complicated and difficult and advanced and, and so to make it a bit harder you need to use a more advanced uh, research server. And these weren't, they weren't too bad to make so I put them on the top on the tower of construction over here, um, way up at the top and I decided because they need, there's another telescopic recipe so you need to make the normal research servers in order to make the advanced research servers. And the normal research servers were previously being made way down, 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 I don't know, somewhere, somewhere down near the bottom anyway. Um, and so I... It wasn't really, I didn't really fancy bringing them from down here all the way up to the top. Um, I, I could have done it by bot, I could have run a belt up, but both of those things are kind of no-nos. Because, um, well, for, it only takes one research server to make each advanced one, but it only takes one machine in order to make start making them up here again. So, or two machines actually, and some inserts, a, little, a few little bits and pieces like that. But I wasn't going to run a belt all the way up, because that would have been ridiculous. The sheer number of them we would have had to have on, that, on, that, uh, on the belt, just sitting there doing nothing, would have been so wasteful. And now, yes, I could have used a memory cell system to count them in, count them out, and make sure there was only a couple on the belt at any one time, or I could have joined all of the belts together with reading systems, but no, it seemed, I felt it'd be nicer, just, just, let's just make them again up here, and then I can feed them straight through into here and make, and make the tier twos. And they require a certain number of other things as well, like holmium solenoids, processing unit, immersium beams, and so on. We seem to run out of immersium, which is, um, fair. oh no, no we haven't. No, we just, oh no, we just, we just fall over here. That's why it's not. That's why it's not uh, filling more up. Um, so there was most mostly this was very very easy because all of these things were already on the, on the belts because we've been they're, they're things we use quite a lot except for the AI cores. Now Mark has already made these and they were being used for something. I can't remember what. Maybe it was maybe it was on the advanced um, uh, robot ports or something like that. He's making them over here in bioscience because most of the things they require are sort of a bit biological. So there's a couple of bi yeah those, those two things for example and and the, in fact those three are all bioscience related stuff. Um, then Immocyte, Immocyte is a generic input, so they can bring that in. This one is a sort of an energy science related, but it's also on the train system, so it's fairly easy to bring it in over here. And oh, he's made another one or two. So yeah, we can we can tr trundle through making these as, as we as we need them, and then I've got this ludicrously long belt that goes all the way over here <laughs> and brings them over to be made into the uh, in, into the advanced research servers. We'll probably at some point have more machines up here that do other stuff with the AI cores. I'm pretty sure they're going to be used for other things like um, supercomputers and uh, probably other stuff as well. But for now, they're, um, they're 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 being brought all the way over here just for this one thing. And so now to have the research servers, I needed something to put in them. So we've got machines down here doing uh, doing three of the uh, science types. So we've got uh, um, snowflake data here, which is made from uh, nanomaterial. Now that was fairly easy because nanomaterial was being made just up here. It, and I say fairly easy because it's a sort of it was easy because I'd already done most of the things I needed for it. Uh, making the nanomaterial itself was a bit of a mission uh, back back when I was doing it. But now that we've got it, it's 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 now fairly trivial. The hard part about this was the sheer number of outputs we've got. So you can see it takes in nanomaterial, blank data card, particle stream. Okay, I had to bring in a train load of blank data cards. That, that was a thing. But uh, and then the, but we already had particle stream. We already had thermofluid. But then it produces so much stuff, and uh, some of these are hard, harder to deal with than others. So obviously the nano engineering data is what we wanted, so we feed that over to the uh, to the to the um, the, the, the uh, research servers up there. 
The nanomaterial, well, that's an input, so that's fine. On the 5% chance of that being produced, we just, feed, we just feed it around down this belt here, and pass it back through here, and we've got, and it can just go back in, and I've set up a priority on the, on the splitter here, so it'll come through, and it'll get spat out here, and we'll, we'll use that one first by preference. Fine. Um, so that's those two dealt with. The rest of it, though, is a little bit funky. So the scrap and the contaminated scrap, I can just throw onto the recycling belt. That's that's fine. So that, 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 that's just passed through here, onto, dumped onto the recycling belt. It'll get passed over to the recycling station, which is a bit further away than I thought when I started scrolling. It'll just get passed over here. It'll come in on the recycling belt, and it'll be chomped up by the by the machines over here. The holmium solenoids aren't too bad, because they, they're needed up here in order to make the nanomaterial. Well, they're needed up here in order to make the dynamic emitters in order to make the nanomaterial. So that's fine. We can just pipe them back in, chuck chuck them back into the um, in, into the supply system up here. So we've got on the on the junk belt, I've got a splitter here that's taking off any uh, sol holmium solenoids, not solmium holenoids. So that's just me not being able to talk properly. Uh, putting them onto the belt here, which this is where the train unloads, so it goes into the standard input gets put back into the warehouse and we'll just go round and round and round until it gets used up. Fine. But then we had the heat shielding and the low density structures. Those also need to be got rid of somehow. And after scratching my head a little bit about that one because it, it was, a, it was a, a bit more complicated, I decided okay we'll put them onto the disposal belt. They can come up along here and then as they trundle along the disposal belt, as they go past the bottom of the bus, we'll have this filtering system here that pulls out um, heat shield tiles and low density structures and we'll take them up and put them into the into the supply system up here. So we're feeding this into the, this is the train that comes up from Norvis and then feeds into the general bus supply here. And there's a there's a slight concern with this. The the concern is, are we going to produce enough of those that this system could theoretically fill up at some point in the future? And we're pretty sure it's going to be okay because the low density structures will be used up here, but to make these belts in order to make utility science and also to make the belts over here that go into making the space science. So that'll get rid of, that'll get rid of the, um, uh, the low density structures. We'll do, because we, any time we use a deep space science pack, we're probably going to use, probably a space science pack, and there's a fairly high chance we'll use a utility science pack as well. So there's going, that's going to be fine. That, that'll be able to keep up, no problem there. And after a bit of umming and erring, we worked out that the heat shield tiles get used up by, I think it was advanced data cards up here. Yeah, these advanced data cards. One of these stages down here uses up heat shields in order to make the um, scaffolding, in order to make the the advanced scaffolding, I forget the name of it, which gets passed up here to make the advanced data cards. So as long as we keep doing advanced data card researches at a 20th of the rate we're doing deep space science on that, we should be absolutely fine. And I think, let's have, let's have a look at the research. If we pick a random thing that requires a deep space science one, <laughs> that one doesn't use advanced packs, okay, that might be problematic. But this one, no, it uses rocket tech up. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's not going to be quite as easy. Maybe it's not going to be quite as reliable as I thought. But for this one, for example, when we use up the deep space science pack, we're also going to be using up an advanced science pack. We're going to be using up a utility pack and a space science pack. So we'll get through all of those and hope. And I, I, I believe we, we're not. I don't. I can't imagine us having an actual overflow problem with the heat heat shield tiles um, because we also use massive quantities of heat shields and um, and, and low density structures for making various machines and and uh, and we're making all the scaffolding and that sort of thing. So they're things we get through a lot of. But in theory, if we get to a point where we've built our factory out to the point it's 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 big enough, it's doing everything we want, we might stop building infrastructure and just build science. This is quite unlikely. I don't think that's going to happen. But in theory, it's possible. So we wanted to check and see that we were at least going to be using up some of those in the science packs. And that seems to be fine. You might have noticed that there's a fish on this one as well. That's because I thought, well, I'll put in three of these. And then if I end up having to chuck an extra extra thing out here as well, then I can just reprogram this. It's already in place. That's going to be nice and simple. Um, you know, a little bit a little bit of future proofing. And I can add more of these on if necessary. There's plenty of space along here. Uh, so that's, that is, is a trick I may need to use again in the future. We shall see. And so that's the snowflake data. That seems to be uh, that's that's working quite well. As you can see, we've got a belt full of that here. It goes all the way up to the and and, and, and the belt is completely full. We, we're not able to do anything with it. Great. Uh, we, and then the next one is this squishy data. What are you what are you actually called? Naquium structural data. So we're trying to squish Naquium ingots apparently. Um, and that one again has filled up. So we brought in the, we brought in the Naquium over here. We've got, I put in loads and loads of stations over here to get all all the bits and pieces in that we needed. Uh, there's one here as I, as I was talking about in the last video for bringing in the um, the, the the void data probe data data probe void probe data probes um, cards 
<laughs> so that, that's, that, that was the first one I put in. Then another one for the data cards. And then what, what do you owe? You're, you're supposed to be doing Naquium crystals if we ever get any of those. And we've got the ingots. We've got a couple of fluid ones down here for the um, uh, lube and the ion stream. And then one down here for magnetic canisters, which I'll talk about in a moment. And you might notice that I put these stations in sort of in pairs. Uh, with the idea being they have the battery feeds running up the middle. And then um, and then a couple of a couple of warehouses and battery feeds for the next two. And that the idea behind that was just to stop me having to put in quite so many belts w carrying the batteries in. Uh, and just sort of save a little bit on the number of batteries just sitting around not doing anything and so I'm quite pleased with this design I feel it's quite it's just it's just nice uh, yeah, so and then so over here, yes, we're doing that. The next one were, then was this one that has a radioactive symbol on it, the Naquim Energy Data. So that requires an ion canister. Uh, and an ion canister is fairly easy. You bring in a magnetic canister and you pump it full of ion stream. So I've brought in some ion stream. Um, magnetic canisters, on the other hand, are fairly complicated to make. So I thought, well, I, I could make some more. But there, I mean, they're, they're, I didn't really want to. Um, so what I did, what for those? Well, I've been making the magnetic canisters over here in the matter science production uh, because we need to make those in order to make. Well, apparently the the microwave bacon data. And so, but these, are, these, as I say, are fairly complicated to make. You need to, to make the magnetic canister. You need um, you need to bring in a, a basic canister that can be brought up from the ground, plus a battery, plus some rare metals, plus superconductive cables, which require themselves require um, holmium and Holmium cable and cryonite, so it's, it's it's a bit of a mission to make those, and I didn't really want to do that again. My original plan had been to, to make the uh, superconductive cables available on the train system, but I thought actually in this particular instance, I think I'll just jump in right at the end here, and we'll take these ones away. And the system seems to be able to keep up quite happily. If we start doing a matter and a deep space science researches at the same time, then we might find we're putting a bit too much of a load on these machines. But if that happens, then well, I'll just extend it. That's what it's for. That's what this area is for. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll make make things make things as fast as we need to. Um, that'll be fine. I'm sure, we, I'm sure we can keep pumping in enough Holmium cable. That, that used to be the limiting factor. I don't know if it still is, but that, uh, we'll, we'll just keep pumping it in and I'm sure it'll be okay. And so that has the, oh no it doesn't, except it doesn't have the uh, the energy data coming out yet because you also need Naquatite crystals. And that was the thing, that was, it wasn't an afterthought so much, but it was something I came along and realised a little bit later that I was going to need. So I put in the, the system to bring the crystals over a bit later than I put in the system to bring the ingots over. So whilst we are making crystals, as you saw on Saturday, we're not actually shipping them over to uh, Norbit yet, so they're just going to be sitting... They're sitting sitting in a station in, or in a train or in a spaceship at the moment, waiting to be brought over. But once they are, I've put in all the train systems we need, and uh, and, and they'll get they'll get brought over, dropped off in um, this station up here, and then passed out and going. We'll go into the science pack down here. And so, as you can see, we've, we've now got three of the data card types we need. And once the crystals arrive, we'll get the fourth one. Uh, I've got in the the coolants. Now these machines are weird because they're um they're an even they're even number of. In, in size, so there there are six by six. Every other machine that does stuff with fluids is an odd number. This one's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one's nine by nine, and so you can nicely arrange the um, the inputs along the side of it. This one is six by six, which is why you've got this weird offset and why these these pipes don't line up, and that kind of bothers me a little bit. It looks it looks a little bit strange. On the plus side, though, it does mean you can whack them right up next to get next to each other like this without having the uh, the two fluid systems mixing. Uh, what I would normally do would be that, so you get the the super chilled on the same side and the warms on the same side so they could link and it wouldn't cause any problems um, but I didn't need to because well the um the, 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 they're, they're a funny shape. <laughs> um, it was a little bit of a surprise and it was a little bit confusing when I was trying to put it together but I, I, I worked it out reasonably quickly. <laughs> reasonably. And so from here we have the output belt. We'll take the catalogues when they're made. It'll bring them down to uh, this this final station down here at the bottom, and then we'll put we'll put about maybe 500 into each of these warehouses, and then eventually I'll put in a train, and I'll put in a system to take the take the for the train to take the um, the deep space science catalogues uh, to, and then we can start turning them into deep space science packs. Which says there we go. So deep space so it takes a catalogue, significant data of course, Naquin plate, makes sense. Advanced neural gel, well that's going to be fun to drag over, we'll but we'll find a way. And then thermofluids as well, that's fine. So this doesn't look doesn't look too bad. The most awkward part is going to be getting advanced neural gel over, except actually, I think we might already have advanced neural gel over here for the biologicals. We don't already have advanced neural gel over here for the biologicals. Okay, well, I um, I, I got excited, uh, prematurely excited there. Um, that's interesting. I could have, I could have sworn we need we we need to bring it over here for something. Maybe I was just thinking ahead, and it actually is the deep space science pack. So we'll uh, yeah we'll get we'll get that sorted out at some point. 
One of the biggest things I had to do in order to get all this up and running was get the, was the sheer number of extra stations and trains I put in because there's so many new things that weren't being transported around before. So the, the mag cans weren't being taken before. The, the ion stream was, the lube was, the naquium wasn't, the naquium crystals weren't. Um, so yeah, that's about, that's about three or four trains, I, extra trains I had to put in. But that's, that was quite easy. We've got this nice simple system over here where we've got a train, train bits that you can copy and paste. So you build your train here, send it off to tell, well, well rather you come over here, you send the existing train off to do other things, then you build another one. So when you come along to do another one, and when you need another train or when somebody else needs another train, they don't curse you because it, uh, because there's another train waiting there ready for them and they don't have to wait for the bots to come over and assemble it for them. All this Naquium we're trying to use is requiring a lot of Naquitite to be brought through. And so I built a second spaceship to go between Stardust and Talos to bring over the, the crushed Naquitite. That's quite, that's working fine. It's, um, if we have to take a quick look at this, we can see that it, it is broken. Great. Okay, it appears to be bringing some sulphur back. Maybe, maybe I don't know why that's, I don't know why that's failed. That shouldn't have been able to leave with some sulphur on it. And with, with the, the probes are a bit of a special case, but that's a bit, that's a bit strange. But yeah, there's thousands of sulphur on that ship. Now maybe the, the warehouses on Stardust are full? No, they're not, they're not full. Um, maybe the, we, we've got a delay system on here, so the ship shouldn't leave without, without permission. That's weird. Something funny has happened there and I don't like it. Um, it hasn't loaded up properly with the, um, with the Naquitite. It hasn't unloaded properly over here, even though there's plenty of space. I don't know what's going on there. Um, these and these warehouses aren't full, so it's, it's 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 left prematurely. We're going to have to have a look into that in the next stream because that is not supposed to be the way this works. But so I did come out to Stardust and I fixed up the problems where I was talking about last week as well. So over here, I put in a couple of extra water tanks down here just to make sure we don't get that overflow of water we're seeing, or excess of water that we we're seeing before. And they're all linked together to this pump, so we're only pumping through when there's a hundred thousand in total between the three tanks, which is why they're all sitting at about thirty-three thousand at the moment. So that that seems to be working quite nicely. Reasonably happy with that. Uh, we've filled up with sulfuric acid, which is good. We've got the trains here. Well, they're, they're, they're stopped because there's nowhere to put the crushed naquium because there's no spaceship to put it into. And so all these, um, everything is everything is ground to a halt here. We've got, we're completely full with all of the, um, with all the naquitite. And the system is just going, well, okay, I guess I'll, uh, I'll, I'll wait until the spaceship comes along, takes stuff away, and then we can start running again. So things do seem to be working pretty well out here. I also fixed the train battery problem over here, so you might remember that we had a train with some fl too many flat batteries on it. The problem was that whilst we did have a, well, the problem was firstly that there were, there were two problems. I came over here and I switched this, this system over to being like uh, this one, so it was taking the batteries out, charging them up, and then before I had a splitter in here and that didn't work, so now I've put it in with, uh, I've put it in with the belts like this and this does work. The problem is that system doesn't work up here because these trains do uh, do longer distances and they travel more frequently and so the, the batteries weren't all getting unloaded into the charger because the charger couldn't recharge them quickly enough and couldn't store enough of them in order to take them all out of the out of the train and then feed them back into it again as required. So instead, um, I've, I've now put in a belt that comes down here, takes them away, down to these four chargers down here, so we can now charge them up four times the rate, and then feed them back in. And this seems to be working. Uh, we haven't really run it for all that long yet, because the ships keep jamming up, but in theory this is now going to be bringing out, uh, it should, should be able to keep these trains running, that should mean we should be able to keep a nice supply of Naquitites coming out here, crushed Naquitite going through into here, and as long as we have enough spaceships coming through, then the whole system should just keep working. But Something was going a bit funny there, and I'm not really quite sure why. I guess we'll uh, maybe we'll find out at some point. Maybe we won't. I don't know. It's a bit. It's a bit of a concern. While I was messing around with Stardust, I tried something that someone had suggested in one of the uh, one of the recent videos in the comments section, uh, saying that uh, asking me why I wasn't going when I when I go from from when I go from Nor uh, Norvis or Talos or wherever out to Stardust, why am I not going via Fenestra? So I did a little bit of testing. Fenestra is the anomaly, and it's in a weird sort of not entirely Euclidean space place. So if I fly over to here, if I go and come into my ship, I can tell it to take me to Fenestra, the anomaly. And if I go to there. Then, well, we, we, we set off as normal, we start flying, and the ship picks up speed, but then instead of, the, instead of the, the travel time doing anything sensible, it starts leaping around all over the place like this. Uh, so you don't really know how long it's going to take, it's, it's a bit of a mystery. However, if you know the game a bit better, you, just, you know that you can expand the position option here, and you can watch the spatial distortion, and when that gets to 10,000, you arrive at Fenestra. Great. Um, but the thing is, it always takes 10,000 spatial distortion to get to Fenestra, no matter where you're going from. And so that means, if you want to go from, say, Dark Flare down here to Creepy Hollow up here, 
if you fly to Fenestra and then fly back again, it still takes 10,000 to get there and 10,000 to get back again. So it takes you exactly the same amount of time as it would to go from Dark Flare to Crystal Collective or from Dark Flare to um, to Felheim. Uh, they're all exact. If you go via if you go via Fenestra, everywhere is the same distance away. And so, so they were suggesting that perhaps I'd be better off going from Kalidus to Fenestra to Stardust in order to cut, in order to shorten the journey time and. They're sort of right. They're, they're, no, they are right. They're straight up are. Um, so in theory, it would probably take longer to go to Fenestra and then then back to Instellar Barons than it would take to go there directly. Um, but St Stardust is ju is far enough away that it actually is quicker. Now it's only a little bit quicker. It takes about two thirds the time to do it if, to, if you go via Fenestra. I think I think that was about what I worked out. Um, and so it is a little bit quicker. However, it is more complicated. And if you're flying manually, then you have to remember to uh, to turn the ship round when it gets to the when it gets to the halfway point. So I think it's probably not worth bothering just for the run to Stardust. But it is definitely going to be worth bothering when we start going out to more distant um, places like a lot further away ones like um, Oblong Gubla. Oblong globulata up here, for example. Anywhere that's anywhere that's a bit further away than Stardust is definitely going to be worth certainly worth considering it, uh, and it's going to be cheaper in fuel as well. So when I was over in Fenestra, Fenestra is an interesting place. You have this uh, Stargate thing in the middle here, which you can you can you can rebuild, but we haven't done yet. Or um, but I came over here and I thought, oh yes, there is, and also there's a, another um, a spaceship wreck up here. So I came in and I looted the good stuff out, of the, or at least most of the good stuff out of the spaceship. Uh, I decided it wasn't worth filling my ship and my inventory up with all of this um, all this scrap. I mean, yes, we could pick it up. We could take it back to Norbit. We could recycle it. We could get some. We could get some uh, resources out of it. But to be honest, not really sure it's worth it. But I did grab some of the more valuable stuff. I missed one of the Naquium solar panels, which is a bit of a fail. But basically, I went. I came in here. Oh, and lots of the not lots of the Naquium accumulators. That's even more of a fail. Um, but the theory, the, the idea was, I came in here. I, I harvested at least most of the Naquium solar panels and accumulators. I grabbed a load. I grabbed some ammunition. I grabbed some. Deep space transport belts. What this? Oh, that, that, that's just a turret with some with some uh, inserts on the top of it. It looked like a special turret, but no, no, it's just some inserts on the top. But mostly, there's there's not really much valuable stuff in this ship. It's mostly scrap, and there's some condenser turbines. Which we've already got plenty of those. It didn't. It didn't seem worth plundering it particularly heavily. And maybe, I, maybe I should. The, the the probably the most valuable thing here is all the spaceship walls and spaceship floors. But it'd be a bit of a faff to pick it up. And I was feeling lazy, so I I, I, I didn't bother. <laughs> we'll probably come back out here again in the future, and maybe we'll do a bit more salvaging then. We shall see. All right. So the ship has landed again, and this time it seems to be behaving itself. It has unload. Right. And this time, yes, this time it has filled up properly. So I don't know what happened last time. It left too soon. I thought we'd fix that sort of problem, but this time, this time it has filled up. We've got we've got the full load of naquium in and of crushed naquitite in there. It's unloaded everything it was supposed to. That looks much much better. And now, so now you can see all of this started running again. The train has emptied. In fact, both trains have emptied, and they've now they're now heading off to go and pick up some more stuff. And we're now gradually refilling the warehouses over here again. So next time a ship arrives, we've got stuff to give to it. Now over here, there is supposed to be a thing that stops that happening. So over here, we have we are we're monitoring this one to see whether the, the uh, spaceship has, has arrived yet um, before we send before we allow it to depart. Um, I've talked about this problem beforehand uh, in previous episodes. I'm not going to talk about it again now, but we will definitely need to have a look at it next week because there's some prob there's definitely some problems going on there because that ship shouldn't have departed with the um, with the stuff it was carrying. So um, yeah, that's a concern. This week, Mark rejoined us, and he has been um, out in paradise. You can see here just how much, um, just what his, his view looked like while he was playing. So it's no wonder he didn't get a huge amount done and got distracted relatively early on. <laughs> no, I think he actually went off to you know spend time with family and stuff like that. But uh, yes, yeah, so he, while he was while he was with us, he uh, he went around. He had a look at some of the things we've been, we've been breaking. Uh, tried to work out what on earth we'd done to all his spaceships, that sort of thing. You know, the standard thing when you go away, everyone breaks your stuff. That's 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 fairly normal, isn't it? Um, but while he was around. He redesigned the, uh, or he pre came up with a new design for uh, heat shield tiles, and this is using the Iridium recipe. So there's a couple of ways to make heat shield tiles. You can use the standard basic recipe, which we've been using so far, where you take in sulfur, stone tablet, and steel, and you get a heat shield tile out. The problem with this is it uses an enormous number of stone tablets, um, which uses quite a lot of stone, um, and also a lot of sort of passing through, or at least a lot of stone bricks, and a lot of passing stuff through. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a little bit of a faff to do this one, but stone is cheap. Uh, and using my, um, I'll put up the I'll put up the prices on screen here because I don't have them to hand. But make, yeah, making st heat shields this way is is pretty cheap. Alternatively, you can make them using the uh, iridium recipe, which also requires sulfur, but much less of it. Instead of instead of taking uh, eight to make one plate, it takes one to make two plates. So you're using um, a sixteenth of the amount. 
you take four stone tablets instead of 20 stone tablets, and then instead of steel, you take one iridium, uh, and you get two heat shield tiles out of it. So it, it, it is more expensive, and again, I'll put the numbers on screen here for the new, for the other recipe, um, because, simply because iridium is so expensive. Uh, but it's a lot easier on the sort of the passing through. You don't need you don't need quite the same sort of level of trying to chuck through stuff through the system as quickly. Um, so yeah, Mark is I think leaning suggesting perhaps we should we should go for this system in the, in the future and upgrade the existing system we have running down on Norvis, which as you can see is using the the old recipe. Uh, and you can see we've got, we've got to, yeah one one machine here feeding out the heat shield tiles for all of these, and it's, it's not going to be it's not as fast. It's not a, it, it isn't it isn't as it isn't as quite as smooth as the as the one he's designed. But it is I think it's cheaper. Um, so. I think I don't know. We we will see. I'm I'm not against up, uh, switching over to using this recipe, um, but I think we do need to keep maintain a, a sort of a careful watch on the amount of iridium we have because I don't want to start using it all up to make heat shield tiles and not have it available for science when there is an alternative heat shield tile recipe available. So I think yes, if we can if we can if we can have the the, the new advanced recipe running sometimes, uh, but use this one. If we run out of run run low on iridium, um, or, or sort of as an emergency backup, then I think that's probably going to be quite a good, uh, could be quite a good thing. Tristan has been hard at work on Norvis, keeping the lights on, making sure everything carries on working while while uh, some of us are off swanning around the galaxy doing all kinds of weird stuff. So he's put in a, a system a thing here that will now take uh, steel plates out of the uh, the recycling system um, and then bring them over to be put in. Pa ba will bypass the uh, the barrel processing and then pass them over here to, in, in, into the into the into the uh, well not into the crusher but into the output from the crusher in order for them to be taken away by a train here and reused somewhere else. Um, and that means we that that's to get around the um, me just dumping steel into it from uh, from over on uh, on Talos when when I'm emptying the vi the uh, vitalic acid barrels and this means he can take it away it'll be it'll be sorted out and it's just another thing that we can just throw into the recycling system and not have to worry about it so that's really useful in Norbit he gave a nudge to the uh, the construction of these of the of the uh, spaceships over here I think I think this means he's put in some additional robot ports to get the to get the coverage over this uh, this uh, this area so we've now got two more uh, spaceports set up and ready ready for any other ingredients we need to bring in by spaceship I'm not sure what else we could need to bring in by spaceship I I thought Naquim is. I think Naquim is more or less the end end game, but we may end up finding something else to bring in. We, you never know. We'll see. We'll see what we come up with. He also noticed that the core processing kept on backing up on rare metals because presumably, yes, all the warehouses down here that have ridiculous amounts of landfill in them had well had filled up. Uh, so he's got he's he's now put it into an even more ridiculous number of warehouses. So yeah, hopefully we will never we will well we, this will keep it running for quite a long time. I I, I don't know. We shall see. Um, the, the problem is though. It, it does. It does feel wasteful turning all the all the uh, all these metals and things into into landfill. But it's so the, the, you can never keep all of this in balance. So I don't know what other choices we really have. So we are in, in yeah. All of these, as you can see, are able are capable of taking in uh, spare spare resources from here, turning it into landfill, and then we're just stockpiling crazy crazy amounts of it. That said, um, Mike did want to fill in uh, a, a an ocean on over on Andrigan, so um, he asked Tristan if he could, if he could have some um, some landfill. He, uh, Mike was expecting Tristan to grab some landfill, go up maybe maybe with or without a train, go up into orbit, put it all into his um, put it all into his spaceship, and 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 then it could fly fly it over. Tristan thought it'd be more fun to land the spaceship down here somewhere and then load and load it in from there. So yeah, oh, here we go. Yeah, he landed the spaceship here, and then discovered that our standard spaceship design. With the two fuel tanks in it, isn't capable of lifting off from uh, Norvis. Now, actually, no, that's unfair. He looked at it. He, he was going, he, and he thought he thought that isn't going to be able to take off from Norvis. So he put an extra two fuel tanks in, but it still couldn't take off from Norvis. So it ended up being stuck down there on the ground until he came over to it and put in an additional, additional four tanks. He's now up to eight tanks of, uh, of, of rocket fuel in the ship. And that one then finally was capable of taking off from Norvis, although that's it. doing so did use up 73% uh, of all of those of all of those tanks. So uh, yeah, that was, um, that was an, an, an entertaining moment and is why there is a ship outline down here with a uh, fueling system uh, set up here. So we can have a train full of rocket fuel turn up, pump it into the uh, pump it into the spaceship, and then finally it'll actually be able to take off. And it's obviously obviously it's parked here because uh, we wanted to chuck all of the landfill in from here in, into that spaceship. So at least on the plus side, uh, Mike's spaceship is now capable of taking off from Norvis. So, you know, that's quite useful. Tristan also filled in some lakes around here to, uh, to yeah to use up some of this landfill because we had we had too much of it we didn't know what to do with all of it so yeah this lake has now been filled in um, and as has this one ah oh, grief um, okay I think it's just those two I don't recognize I don't see any other new chunks of landfill that I don't that I was not previously aware of but yeah okay so we now we now have some space over here where we can go out and you know just 
grow the factory if we need to. <laughs> and I guess he'll carry on filling in up here as we need as we need to get rid of more and more and more landfill, and then maybe all the way across here. And there's there's plenty of lake to fill in as we need it. <laughs> I think Mark has finished uh, clearing up down here where I had this. This is the this is where the old blue circuit factory was that I've been talking about for about a month now because I've been going in and tinkering with it a little bit each week. Uh, Mark, this time Mark got his hands on it, so it's so it's gone because he's a bit more efficient than I am. So yep, completely gone now. And there's another place where we can build another another uh, little town thing in the in the factory if we need to. Uh, this one could be quite valuable because it's quite central. So at some point in the future, if we need if we have something that needs to be built centrally, then this might be a good place to put it. Tristan has been west messing around with new and exciting weapons. So we've finally built some laser artillery turrets. These are. They're not really artillery in the standard Factorio way. What they basically are is they're bigger, much, much more powerful laser turrets that cause a bit of an explosion and splash damage and stuff, and have a fantastic range. So if I if I if I mouse over this, you can see the uh, the range the range. So, well, okay, the range is bigger than my screen. That's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so it outranges my entire screen, but there is a little area in the middle that they can't actually hit. So they're they're not all powerful. If you, if the biters manage to get close to them, then they're in trouble. But that's why we've got a, a wall of normal lasers across the top here. If I upset the biters a little bit, perhaps by just lobbing a, a nuke out here or out. Oh, this, these are all dead. <laughs> out here, perhaps. Um, let's wake them up a little bit, like this. That will hopefully, hopefully that'll wake them up, and some of them will come over and investigate. Now it occurs to me that that new, that artillery shell came in from the south, so I don't know if these biters are actually going to run over and investigate the um, the, the turrets that I wanted. I wanted them to investigate. Maybe I'll try it again from somewhere slightly different. Nope, I take it back. They are coming over, and as you can see, the the laser artillery is ruthlessly effective. I shall also test it down here. So here's another little cluster of biters who I have woken up, and now they're on their now they're on the warpath, on their way over. Here they come into range of the laser artillery now. It starts firing, and yeah, well, basically one shot is enough to kill even the behemoth biters. And interestingly, it seems to focus on the tougher ones first. Um, even when you've got a larger crowd of, eight, of biters coming in, it does seem to start trying to shoot the tougher ones first, and then eventually will pick. And eventually, it'll pick off, pick them all off. Generally, they, one of these laser artillery turrets does seem to be enough to defend against even quite large waves of attacks coming in. So uh, yeah, that's quite exciting. They're really powerful. I'm uh, impressed with that. And Tristan has used them to. Um, to basically clear out a load more a load more space around the edges of the factory. So um, up here, particularly, is wiped. Out, he says he's wiped out loads of nests up here. You can you can see all the mayhem and and general destruction in this whole area. Wow. Um, and he's even found the edge of the world as well. So yeah, he's cleared out lots and lots of biters from a huge huge area over here, and also down over in the, in the southeast as well. Lots of lots of the nests wiped out over here. And I think he's going out looking for, trying to get more of the uh, the more core mines essentially. So you can see here there's a there's a nice core patch, there's core seam there where we can put in another core miner. I'm not sure if that's really necessary. We do have a lot of resources available at the moment, but uh, he's been having fun and. It has actually been quite. It's been quite interesting to see what these laser laser artilleries are like because lots of people have been saying they're really really good. Uh, we've just not bothered to build any, and we've not really felt the need for them. But now we've tried them, and I can say yes, this they are indeed really really good. Um, we, we just don't have a huge amount of need for them at this point because we have um, plague rockets and nukes and various other things that are also fairly effective. Tristan says he has now covered the entire perimeter of the base with these laser, with these laser artilleries, and you don't need them very often in order to get a decent amount of coverage. So he's got one here, and the next one is over here, but that is still full coverage all the way along the wall, and then another one here, and so on. So they're all the way all the way around the edge apparently, and they're going to keep us safe. So that's nice to know. Um, it's a big step forward in amount of weapon in amount of uh, damage we can do. I almost feel like we need much much tougher biters um, as well to. To, you know, give them something to work against, but uh, that seems uh, excessively masochistic at this point. And speaking of things Tristan does, there has been some research done as well. He has done rocket reusability 15 and 16. Now, as I was saying last week, these are not things that we actually need, but we've got all those expensive science labs up and running, so we feel like we might as well use them for something and just keep. And, and we'd like to we'd like to try and do every non-infinite research before we finish the game. So. Yeah, as you're looking along here, you can see infinite, 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 not infinite. We need to get all the way up to 20 on that one. Uh, that's infinite, that's infinite. That's That one needs doing, that one needs doing, that one and, and, and yeah. So we've we've done a couple of the rocket reusabilities. We've done stronger explosives 10. Um, we can't do 11. Oh, no, we can't. We could do 11. That's only um, mat 4 and advanced. So, we, yeah, we can do that one. We've done refined flammables 11. Um because again because we can <laughs> these are all these these are all the things that it's not really necessary but 
we've got the research available. And he's done zone discoveries 121 up to 130. Presumably that is all of them because we've gone infinite now. So I guess that's just that's that's presumably is the, the lot. Um, but you know, it's, it's 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 more science to do. But yeah, nothing particularly exciting to report this time. But hopefully next time we'll be able to start doing deep space science, and then we can all start arguing. I mean, debating over what the most interesting things that are going to be to go for, to do for that. Uh, we, we've got another mining productivity, which is not enormously exciting, but is very useful. Uh, we've got the various bio um, person upgrades. We've got a, a new type of module, shields, modules, jetpacks, matter catalog too. That could be interesting. Uh, bot speed, like weapon, uh, and naquium cubes. That sounds terrifying. Matter processing, accumulate. Yeah, so you see, there's there's lots of stuff that, we, that we're going to be able to do once we get deep space science one up and running. So there's lots of potential in there. Uh, and so, let's see what else is going to be going on on the channel then. So don't forget to come back on Thursday when we will be playing some more Factorio K2SE and hopefully getting those deep space science packs up and running. We're, we're so close. There's very there's not very much left to do in order to get that up and running. So I am optimistic and hopeful that we're going to get them them up and running next week. There might be a, um, a, a stream on Wednesday if I'm home in time. No promises there, but I might play some Satisfactory if I'm home in time. Uh, either way, there will be a video coming out for uh, for the non-supporters. It's the one the supporters saw last week, and it's something a little bit different, which I hope you'll enjoy, so make sure you check that out. And, of course, the catch-up videos will be happening on... Uh, Saturday and Monday next week as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've had a good Christmas as well because I know what day this is when this one's going to be coming out on. <laughs> so please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Call it a Christmas present for me if you want. And I hope I'll see you in all the, all the upcoming stuff in the next few weeks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then. Bye bye.